Yeah, uh, first of all, thanks for showing up, everybody. This is uh, absolutely wonderful for a softball program to, to get this kind of coverage, and we're, we're certainly appreciative of, of all the coverage that we get. And um, today was a big day for, for Clemson softball. Uh, orange purple scrimmage in front of an outstanding crowd today I mean I don't know how many programs in the country can have a scrimmage in January or excuse me early February and the temperatures be in the low 40s and and uh, have a full house so uh, we're very blessed to uh, play in front of our fans and it's just a great opportunity to get our to get to see our team compete um, today and had a lot of positives and a lot of uh, notes to uh, you know improve on um, leading into our opening weekend uh, this coming weekend in Miami. Coach, what were some of the things that stood out not only today to you but over the fall as well? You know, first of all, I think we have a, a group that's hungry to go farther than we did last year. Um, so pretty cohesive unit. Um, we're working well together as a team. Obviously, a lot of experience. Um, we have some uh, leaders in our program that have been through a regional and super regional now and, and kind of know what to expect. Um, certainly our pitching staff, everybody's back um, a, year, a year better, a year more mature. Um, offensively, um, especially today, I thought we hit the ball extremely well and, and that's been one of our strong points in the past is our offense. And you know, one of the things that we continue to work on is our defense and I think we're, we're uh, a little better than we were last year this time defensively. So a lot of good things um, to look forward to as the season starts. John, as you you got you were used to expectations and what it takes to get to where you ultimately want to go. How the players handle that, especially with the preseason top ten ranking and that kind of stuff. You know, the biggest thing for us is to kind of tune out the noise, so to speak. I think the the best way to deal with expectations is to work hard and be prepared. And that's one thing that our team has done extremely well this year is uh, kind of tune out the noise. I know there's a lot of preseason rankings. There's a lot, there's a lot of expectations from our fans and, and the media. And, uh, you know, I think the biggest thing we can do as a team is just focus on our day-to-day -day routine, routine and get better. And we've done that in the weight room. We've done that in the classroom. We've done that on the field. And uh, it's, uh, it's really uh, nice to see uh, our team grow and mature over the last three years. Have you ever, uh, looking back over your career, have you ever had as much excitement as there is around a couple pitchers like Valerie and Millie coming into a season? Yeah, you know, it's it's uh, it's certainly um, you know nice to have a pitching staff, but especially to have uh, Millie and Valerie lead the way. And um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of hype and a lot of expectations on on our pitching staff. And um, but certainly as a coach, it's it's really nice to know that you have those two to call on. Kind of. Piggybacking off of that, do you have a third pitcher that you're starting to trust? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, you know, obviously Valerie and, and Millie have taken the brunt of the innings, but uh, Reagan Spencer has done a tremendous job the last two years for us. Brooke McCubbin is a sophomore this year. She's got a year of experience under her under her belt. She was really threw well today. You know, her velocity was up. She was making the ball break a little bit and and uh, she's a very capable pitcher. And then uh, Rachel Gibson's another sophomore. Um, didn't pitch a whole lot last year, but she continues to improve and, and uh, work really hard. And, and like I said, all of our pitchers complement each other really well. Uh, and it's really nice to have a staff. You've lost some leaders off of last year's team. Who's kind of stepped into that role this year? You know, certainly I think uh, losing a Cami Prayer as a leader in, in the locker room is huge, but uh, we have a lot of players that um, have been here and done that. Um, like I said earlier, we have high expectations of ourselves, but I think, you know, everybody, we, we don't really have captains and, and everybody's able to lead in our program, but when you have players like Valerie Cagle, Jojo Hyatt, Ariel Loda, Mackenzie Clark, uh, Aliyah Logaleo, um, there's a lot of leadership there, and there's a lot of players that have been here from the start. And so it's, a, it's an interesting story, um, kind of the pioneers of our program, but we have a lot of players that we can lean on for leadership. Go I mentioned the crowd and the support you got <coughs> just today at a very cold scrimmage. Uh, that's a testament to what you guys have been able to build in such a short amount of time. Just what are the emotions of the pride, the sense of pride about what you guys have been able to accomplish in such a short amount of time and the support you get from the fan base here? Yeah, you know, there's an awful lot of pride in our program and, and certainly our players and coaches are, are blessed to be able to play in front of that fan base 
um, at home. And, and sometimes we go on the road, we, we, we realize, you know, how lucky we are because there's some places we play at that don't get the crowd support that we get. But um, our players have earned all of this. You know, it's a, it's a great product that we're putting out on the field. Fast pitch softball is a very entertaining game. And our players do a great job of interacting and being role models for, for future softball players. Coach, um, Mojo was injured last season, um, batted 350 the season before. Is it, could this be a breakout season for her? I think so. You know, Mojo is a player who um, has had two tough injuries, missed two years in a row and, and or, or a year, and then came back here and missed another year. And, and uh, I think she's ready. You know, she had a couple of big hits today. Um, she's hungry. She's worked extremely hard for her opportunities. Coach, who are some of the players that fans may not know of yet, but are really kind of starting to shine for you guys? Yeah, so I think, you know, obviously we have three graduate transfers this year that, that will be in the lineup. Uh, Allie Mecklis from the University of Wisconsin, Caroline Jacobson from Duke, and Reedy Davenport from Florida Gulf Coast University. And uh, much like Sam Russ did last year for us, kind of fill some holes. Um, but three very dynamic players, um, you know, experienced leadership. Uh, both Allie and Caroline played in postseason last year. And, uh, you know, Reedy's a, a spunky little infielder for us. Great personality, great, great leader in the dugout, and, and uh, just a great teammate. So looking forward to big things from those graduate transfers. We have a freshman, Marina Knowles, who's kind of still figuring it out, but seems like every time we put her in, she's getting a hit. Um, and uh, she's made a nice transition from high school travel ball to D1 softball. But, um, you know, we have Ariel Oda, who's in, in the room here today, but Ariel's come a long way in her career here, and she's been kind of a role player, and she's just stepped up and been really consistent for us all year long. How about um, Abby behind the plate? She was a freshman last year. Uh, have you seen that step forward that you usually see from freshman to sophomore? <clears throat> Definitely. You know, I think Abby has improved greatly. I think she handles our pitching staff really well. <clears throat> a very consistent hitter. Um, has that year of experience under her belt. So, so Abby's another one to keep an eye out on. One more question for Coach Griffin. Okay. Thank you Thank all. You.